Many of you are required to do a project doing a SWOT analysis, and many times it's a SWOT analysis on a particular company. And if you get to choose your own company, you normally choose a company you like, right? You choose a company that you like, and you know a lot about all the good stuff about those companies that we all like, right? But the problem comes is now I've got to talk about threats and weaknesses, and how do I know what that is? It's because I, you know, maybe I like this company and I don't even really know anything uh, bad about them. Or if I do, it's just the ordinary stuff like they got competition or, you know, the government might change regulations and that could affect their business. Well, that's true for every company, really. So I'm going to show you a tool right now that you can use for many things in business school. In fact, if you want to know the most about a company, this is the best place to go. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to go to Google and I'm going to start with a company like Walt Disney. I mean, who doesn't like Walt Disney? I don't know. So what I'm going to do is go Disney 10K and the 10K report is the report that's required by the Securities and Exchange Commission that all for profit publicly traded companies have to fill out. They have to fill out a 10Q for quarterly and they have to 10K for annually. And so you'll see that when I put 10K report in here, we've got some other things that have come up. Many times it's from the company themselves, the Walt Disney Company. One that we'd like to look at is the SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission. Now again, this applies specifically to companies that are for-profit publicly traded companies. And here it is, United States Securities and Exchange Commission, Form 10K, the Walt Disney Company. Now this is the most valuable information that you can find when you're in business school trying to do a report or something. So now let me see if I can get my screen a little bigger so you can see this. So this has got now this is just the front page here, but now you're going to come down here and you're going to see the table of contents. Now this is a very lengthy um, document, but it has so much. Pretend like we've never even heard of Walt Disney. Here's the business and what it does and who they are. And right here under item 1A is risk factors. This is what you, now again, this is laid out very similar for almost every company. So even if you're not choosing Walt Disney, and I'll show you another example of another one here in a minute, but risk factors, that'll take you right to the areas that they say, this is coming from Walt Disney, and what they say might be some risk or potential threats. But first of all, let's look at some of this other stuff. Staff comments, properties, legal proceedings, these could all be things that could potentially be a threat or a weakness. Mining safety regulations, uh, part two. Now this is going to talk about a lot of different stuff about the company, but let me just go show you here and I'm going to scroll. So here's item one, the business talks about Walt Disney, employs about 201,000 people uh, around the world as of September 2018. Now this is the most recent one that we have here. Um, media networks. So they're going to talk now about their company. Media networks, uh, Cable networks, uh, Disney owns uh, 50, I think, what does it say here? Cable networks, uh, ESPN, uh, Disney. So here we go. Here's the subscribers for all of this Disney Channel and ESPN that they own. ESPN uh, they is owned 80% by Walt Disney Companies and 20% by the Hearst Corporation. So then we have the radio. Here's the Disney Channels. Um, here's different channels uh, in, in foreign countries like India. Broadcasting, the broadcast television network. Oh, by the way, see here, if you didn't know this, company operates the ABC television network. Okay, 244 local televisions reaching almost 100% of U.S. television households. That could probably be a strength, right? So they own ABC. Uh, here's the stations, and you'll see New York, Los Angeles, Chicago, etc. How about equity investments? These are maybe companies that they don't necessarily own right out, but they have heavy investments in them. You'll see here they've listed equity in 
The A&E Television Network is owned 50% by the Walt Disney Company and 50% by the Hertz Corporation. That includes A&E History, Lifetime, Lifetime Movie Network, FYI, um, and here's those channels and their viewership over here. Uh, ESPN also owns 30% and CTV Specialties and Canada, Sports Networks, on and on it goes. How about Hulu, right? Hulu is, is part, it, they have an interest, a financial interest in that. Hulu is owned 30% by Walt Disney Companies uh, and Warner uh, Interest and others. Okay, so they're telling you what they have a heavy interest in in their investing. Now they're going to talk about the competition and seasonality as it directly relates to what we're talking about up here, which is their television and cable networks. So this is a good area where you might find some uh, things that would help you with your SWOT analysis as far as weakness and threats. So let's go on. Federal regulation, that is a threat to every single company. Now, especially if you're in a company that operates worldwide, because here they're talking about FCC uh, as it relates to the cable network and their programming. Uh, but this could be other parts of the world, too, that they broadcast. OK, so let's continue. Parks and resorts. So we know Walt Disney World. Uh, Disneyland, and here they're going to list them, the Magic Kingdom, Epcot, Hollywood Studios, Animal Kingdom, their vacation club properties, company owns and operates 18 uh, hotels and vacation clubs, on it goes. Now it's going to talk about the individual, Disneyland, uh, California Disney Adventure, Disneyland Paris, uh, Alani, uh, Aoluani Dis uh, Resort and Spa, <clears throat> Disneyland Hong Kong, Shanghai, Tokyo, Disney Vacation Club, 14 resort facilities uh, in Flor uh, Florida, South Carolina, on it goes. Uh, Disney Cruise Lines, Disney by uh, Adventures by Disney. Walt Disney Imagineering. And now we're here we are again. Competition and sustainability, right? So here's an area where you might find some weaknesses or threats. How about studio? They make movies too, right? Marvel, Pixar, uh, Lucasfilm, Touchstone, DreamWorks, Theor oh, imagine all the movies we've seen by those companies, right? X-Men and Star Wars, Fantastic Four, On It Goes. How about this one? Uh, Spider-Man licensed to Sony Entertainment, but part of Marvel, owned by Walt Disney. Uh, theatrical markets, so it's going to talk a little bit about that. Home entertainment, television, video on demand, pay television, free television, uh, net, uh, shows on Netflix, Showtime, Stars. International television, Disney Music Group. Not only do they make the movies and the TV shows, but they also make the move. They also produce the sound and music, and and um, they own the rights to all the Disney songs going all the way back to the beginning of the Disney Company. A theatrical Group. Uh, how about this one? You know where they're putting on their Broadway shows: The Lion King, Aladdin, Little Mermaid, etc. Right? Beauty and the Beast. They have the theatrical. Now here again, competition and seasonality as it relates to this above area here we've been talking about. How about consumer products? Of course, all the merchandising, uh, games, toys, etc. Um, retail. These are might be retail stores where they have their actual uh, Disney stores and they also have the shops and in Disney games, video games, etc. Regular games and video games, publishing, books, magazines, etc. Uh, competition and seasonality there. Intellectual property rights. And we could talk a lot about that too when we're talking about Walt Disney. So now here we're going to talk about item 1A. This is where I was trying to get to, but I wanted to give you a brief scope as to all the stuff that's included in this 10k it has all their financial information talks about how their ceo is paid why they're paid the way they are all kinds of things typically in these 10k reports and they'll all be laid out pretty much the same 
uh, for your company. So now we're under the section of risk factors. Now remember, I don't know if you can see my little scrolly bar over here, uh, but I'm only about not even 25% of the way down and look at all the stuff we've already covered. So uh, risk factors, change in U.S. global and regional economic con conditions. That means the entire economy could change. Changes in public consumer, consumer taste for entertainment. These are threats, right? These are things that could be considered threats. Changes in technology and consumer su consumption patterns affect the demand for entertainment products. On and on it goes. Uh, the, t the success of our business is highly dependent on the existence and maintenance of intellectual property. Protection of electronically stored data is costly. Variety of uncontrollable events may reduce demand for our products and services, right? Change in our business strategy and restructuring. Increased competition may reduce revenues or increase our costs. So you'll see here, turmoil in the financial markets, sustained increase in costs of pensions and post-retirement medical for employees. Employees costs, this could be for everybody too. Change in regulations to their specific business. Our operations outside the United States could be adversely affected by law in those jurisdictions. So you can see labor disputes, seasonality, uh, risk factors related to the acquisition of 21 CF. So anyway, you get the picture. A lot of information, and I'm still only about well, 20% of the way down. And, and this is about risk, and you see there's a lot of reading here, but really if you ever want to know anything about a company, uh, staff can make properties. Here's all their buildings that they own, legal proceedings, mine safety, not applicable. I didn't know they were in the mining business, but anyway, executive officers in the company. Here's their CEOs and how long they've been there, their age. Amazing the amount of comp the information you're going to find here. Market for the company is equity. And now we're going to get into some financial data. Uh, it gets more complex as we go. Uh, but there's so much here that I can really go on and on. But let me do this. Let me do one more just so you kind of get the picture. So let's do this. I'll go back up here to my Google. And let's do this one. Just to show you what we're talking about. Apple 10K and SEC filings. That's under the Apple, Investor Apple. But here is SEC. Dot gov. That's going to be the one like we saw. And here it is. And because it's web-based from the SEC website, if I want to go right to risk factors, I can go right there. So again, I'm trying to help you out if you're trying having a hard time coming up with things for maybe a company that you really like. And other than just the ordinary competition and government regulation. Uh, so now we're talking about Apple. Global and regional economic conditions uh, as a result of operation, financial condition, and growth. Uh, highly competitive, subject to rapid technology change. The company may be unable to compete effectively in these markets. The, uh, to remain competitive and stimulate demand, the company must successfully manage frequent introductions and transitions of products and services. So, of course, think about Apple. People are always expecting more products from that company to come out. Performance of carriers, wholesale, retailers, and other resellers. So this has to do with people that sell their products. Where do we buy Apple? Well, we can buy it at the Apple Store, but we can buy it online for Amazon and many other places. The company depends on them for sales. The company faces substantial inventory and other risk in, in addition to purchase commitment cancellation. So think about a company that's coming out with new technology all the time. They have the uh, iPhone 10 and now the 11, 12, 13, 14 is out. What do they do with all of those 10s? That adversely affects. Now, of course, from a county standpoint, they probably have all that stuff figured out. But this is future operations depend on the company's ability to obtain components in sufficient quantities. So again, 
if they rely, anybody that's in a manufacturing, if they're trying to get a particular raw material that they make their product with, in this case maybe it's the glass or the metal or the electronic chips, uh, that's going to, uh, they're reliant on other suppliers, basically is what that's saying. And then the logistics about uh, uh, many of their outsourcing partners are outside the United States, so they got the problem with transportation or anything could happen. One of the ones I talk a lot about uh, in my classes is the, the tsunami in Japan that wiped out some of the uh, manufacturing over there that they that the United States big companies was relying on those products. So anyway, I wanted to give you some uh, insight onto some places that you could find threats and weaknesses for doing your SWOT analysis. But really, if you're in business school, grab some 10Ks for companies that you really like. I have a lot of them I use in my classes, specific companies that I like to watch. I love them when they're like Walt Disney and they're highly diversified. I love Carnival Cruise Lines because they have so many different brands and different uh, things going on. They're very, you know, entertainment industry is, is really exciting to read and they have so much going on that makes them a little bit more interesting. But even if it's a boring company, you know, like somebody, uh, you know, I don't know, um, the Potlash Corporation, they make uh, paper products, you know, it's a, it's a paper mill company. Uh, uh, Georgia Pacific is a paper company. It's not exciting, but you know, read their stuff. Maybe it's exciting to you. Maybe somebody you work there, you know, that works there. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching and um, check out my other videos on other topics.